welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be testing out a crap ton of new drugstore makeup that 2021 has already blessed us with. I have new products from Rimmel, Maybelline, NYX, uh, Koki, Physicians Formula, e.l.f. So we have a full face of new makeup, so many exciting new launches that I can't wait to first impressions test out with you guys so if you are interested in seeing my thoughts on a ton of new at the drugstore makeup then just keep on watching just a heads up this video might be a long one so grab a coffee grab whatever you want i want to do first impression style read all the product claims of every single product so it's like a rapid testing products while just chatting and getting ready with you guys. I would love to do individual videos on all of these products, but I just don't realistically have the time. So I have set aside a few other new drugstore products that I will be doing dedicated videos on. So stay tuned for that. But today we are going to just like rapid test out a ton of new makeup because the drugstore has been blessing us this month. I have been checking Shoppers Drug Mart and Trend Mood and Walmart and Ulta like obsessively every single day in the new arrival section and I've acquired a ton of the new good stuff. So let's get into it. Let's try it out. Let's go. This first product I am probably maybe most excited out of everything. You guys know I love a good primer and Trixie Mattel, my favorite RuPaul's dry queen, has been talking about this nonstop on her Instagram and YouTube so obviously I needed to try it out. The packaging is impeccable, gorgeous, cute, pink, perfect. So this is the Marshmallow Smoothing Primer. What a cute name. It retails for $22 Canadian. Pretty steep and hefty but you do get um, over the well, just over the 1.01 fluid ounce, so 30 milliliters, like a classic foundation. It says, it is the marshmallow effect. This 10-in-1 smoothing super primer is infused with smoothing marshmallow root extract for 10 outstanding makeup benefits. With a soft whipped texture, this primer dries down totally transparent to work on all skin types. All right, so the 10 makeup extending benefits are that the primer smoothens, softens, extends makeup wear for 16 hours, hydrates, soothes, even skin tone, minimizes texture, blurs lines, uh, adds a soft focus finish, and keeps makeup fresh. It is 100% vegan formula and no silicones. I have already gone in and cleansed and hydrated as well, so... We are all set to go. I'm going to go ahead and apply this just to my fingers so I can get a feel for the texture. It didn't really say how much to apply, like one pump, two pumps, whatever. I'm sure it doesn't really matter. It says you can use it alone or under foundation as well. This is how it looks on the fingers. Kind of looks like one of those pore filling, like professional primers almost, but a little bit of a thinner consistency feels really really good going onto the skin doesn't feel dry if I need smoothing anywhere it's definitely in this area where my acne is losing its shit now I'm just gonna pat this in make sure it's really pressed in there it feels really good on the skin I my main concern with that was that it was gonna be mattifying and pill up a little bit um, but it's not doing that at all if anything it feels a touch hydrating um, it's not super tacky, but it has a slight, very slight tackiness to it. it feels very smooth and buttery on the skin. Um, up close, looking in a mirror, like super up close to my face, I don't really notice a difference, but this is more so a primer that I feel like you notice a difference once you have all of the makeup on. Next up for complexion, we have the new e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. Everyone was losing their crap over this on Instagram, saying that it was a dupe for the It Cosmetics CC Cream at a more affordable price. Obviously, the packaging is very reminiscent and the claims are very similar. Um, I will link all of the products down below with the pricing. I did keep the package for this one so we can read the intended use. So it is a color correcting, full coverage, natural finish infused with collagen, peptides, and niacinamide, all ingredients that I love, and it has broad spectrum... Bleh, broad spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen. Apply one to two pumps of the CC cream to clean skin. 
using our elf brush, whatever, we're not doing that. Apply liberally 15 minutes before sun exposure, reapply at least every two hours. So the reapplication is if you want to maintain that SPF. Um, I got mine in Fair 120N Neutral Beige Undertones. I swatched it on myself and it looks like a really good match. I'm also, with this, going to be trying out the new Koki sponge that they sent me. This feels incredibly soft. I just wet it for the first time and it feels like butter. It feels different than my other sponges do. It feels much more soft and smooth. So this is the package that it came in. It is the Cover and Conceal Beauty Sponge from Koki. Versatile beauty sponge that seamlessly applies powders, creams, and liquids. Dampen prior to application. All right, so I applied just a little dot, little dot guy. Um, very similar consistency to the CC cream as well looks super similar. Okay, let's apply this. So far, so good. That is one little pump applied. I think it actually looks really, really good. I freaking love this sponge. It feels so nice and soft and hydrating. And I really like how that CC cream looks, at least with the primer so far. It's looking very smooth, dewy. It's a good color match for me, maybe a touch light. Um, yeah. Okay, let's continue applying a little bit more. I'll do like a half pump more for my forehead um, because we have a concealer to test as well. So looking on camera as well as looking in my mirror super close up, I freaking love how this looks. Um, my skin's not the best right now and it's also pretty dry and this isn't clinging to any dry patches. Maybe it's the combination with the sponge and the primer, but whatever it is, I really, really like how this looks. I think it's the perfect every day. I think e.l.f. knocked it out of the park. I will be doing a wear test today. None of these products like have super crazy long wearing claims. I guess the primer says that it's gonna make your makeup last longer. Anyway, we're gonna do a wear test anyway because it is three as I'm filming this and I'm going into a shift at work. So I'll be doing work for a couple hours. I'll be wearing a mask, so we may as well do a wear test. Next up, we have a new concealer from Rimmel London. This is their Lasting Radiance Concealer and Eye Illuminator. So excited about this. I love a good natural radiant concealer. So I purchased mine at Shoppers, but on the Rimmel London sites, site it says that it retails for five pounds don't remember exactly how much i got it for but i'll link shoppers down below it says that this concealer instantly illuminates the skin for a fresh and radiant look it conceals and illuminates it is skin brightening it has vitamin c to erase signs of tiredness radiant pearls for a fresh glow and it is full and flawless coverage so we love full coverage with a luminous finish that's like pretty much my ideal um, let's look at the ingredients, see if there's any standouts. So there's dimethicone, silica, which is going to be smoothing on the skin. Nothing that super stands out to me, but it does say that there's vitamin C, which is nice. It comes in six shades, which is totally a flop. I got mine in 010 Ivory, which is their lightest, which actually looks pretty dark for a lightest shade concealer. I have their Stay Matte Concealer, which is in Porcelain. Um, but they didn't have a porcelain option for this one. Maybe they will expand. Hopefully they will expand. But as of now, we got ivory. So excited for this. Full coverage and illuminating is like the best of both worlds for me. So let's give this a go. You get seven milliliters, which is pretty standard for concealer. I'd say maybe a little less than typically. I feel like concealers are like 10 milliliters. I'm going to conceal all of my spots first. This is what I usually do. I usually do my concealer in two steps. I do all of my spots first and then I will set them with powder and then I'll go in to do my under eyes last. I don't know how well you can tell on camera but this is definitely a shade too dark for me. It definitely feels thinner in consistency than like the elf camo concealer but we will see. Hmm, I feel like that didn't do anything. I can still see all of my spots. Um, if anything, they just look a little darker because this is a darker shade than I'm used to. I'm going to go ahead and apply another layer just to give it a go. And if we can't build up coverage, I might just build up the e.l.f. CC a little bit. And I'm tapping super, super lightly so that I'm not removing any product. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I just really don't see that giving me any coverage. Maybe I'll look back when I'm... It did up here a little. 
Maybe I'll look back when I'm editing and decide that I'm crazy. You guys let me know. I feel like that didn't give me any coverage. Um, I've decided though that I'm not going to go in and build up the CC because I do have a powder foundation to use. I forgot. So that'll give me the coverage that I want. So I'm just going to go in with a concealer a little bit under my eyes. I'm not going to mix it because I feel like that's cheating. We'll just have dark under eyes. It's fine. Pretty orange toned. I feel like you can't tell on camera, but in person it's pretty orangey let's blend this out i really really like this cokey sponge i don't hate that for the under eyes it didn't darken it i don't think it didn't brighten but i don't think it darkened it so i'm not mad at that at all i thought it would look really bad on the under eyes to be honest but i think it looks really nice it's very smooth other than not really providing coverage from what i can tell thus far i don't think this is bad it's not cakey it looks really nice and healthy under my eyes so if you don't like a lot of coverage this might be a good one for the under eyes i'll definitely keep playing around with it but first impressions not impressed just because it doesn't meet the full coverage claim for like my acne spots but for an under eye concealer i think it looks nice even though it's dark if it was like my true shade i think it would be really nice um so i don't know Next up to set the face, we have two powders that Koki kindly sent over. So we have the Koki Setting Powder in Translucent, um, a lightweight sheer finishing powder with a natural finish to prolong the wear of makeup, can be worn over foundation or worn alone. So we're going to use that just to set the under eyes with the sponge. And then we also have the Koki Pressed Powder Foundation. This is a new product from them. I have mine in Warm Beige 20W. I read that and was very worried because I'm never a shade that's called beige, but it looks like a perfect match. So, but first we are going to go ahead and set the under eyes with my Koki translucent setting powder. I've been really into trying new setting powders for some reason. I feel like it's such a boring product to try new things to try. Yeah, such a boring product to like experiment with and play around like it's just a setting powder, but I've been into it for some reason. I've been into finding new ones that I like. Okay. Gonna go ahead and even out any creases that we might have, cause I'm a creasy bitch. Get tons of creasing no matter what. And I used to do the whole baking thing, which is kind of ridiculous cause I have such dry skin. I should not be doing that. It's not made for someone like me. I mean, do what you want, but yeah. Anyway, um, I have been into just doing this where I just take like a decent amount of powder and just look up and press it in and then I don't really wipe anything away I just really press it into the skin and let it sit there and I find that works best for me rather than like applying a crap ton of light powder and then letting it sit and then dusting it away I just like doing it with a sponge and pressing I think it looks ridiculously good I don't know if it's a combination of the powder with the concealer with the primer with the smoothing everything but it looks so blurred and flawless it does look like it darkened my under eyes a touch i don't know if you can tell but even on my sponge you can see it added a little bit of darkness so i think the powder dries down a little bit darker than it shows in the container but i think it looks really smooth super soft and blurred so feeling really good about the whole situation so far and then we have the pressed powder foundation which is super new to them and this retails for 13 dollars it looks like it only comes in seven shades which is definitely not ideal hopefully they expand from there um because this is 20 w and it looks like the darkest it goes is 40 w and i'm super fair this looks like it's the fourth lightest shade so like the in the middle shade of all the shades so I'm confused by that because this doesn't look that dark. Um, the description says that it is a natural soft matte finish powder foundation formula. It is a breathable lightweight powder that gives a silky texture and is buildable from sheer to medium coverage. Soft blurring effect reduces the appearance of fine lines and smooths the skin appearance. Um, silky texture, soft matte finish, soft blurring effect. So I feel good about that. Normally I don't like a soft matte finish but with powder that's usually what you're gonna get sounds pretty similar to my mac studio fix which is my holy grail press powder and we're just gonna press it into the skin like so i don't like to do like blurring buffing motions i like to just press in my product mostly just for my acne so it doesn't like disrupt anywhere that i've put it but 
to each their own. Here's how we're looking with the powder added. I think it looks really good, you guys. Um, looks pretty identical to when I set with my MAC Studio Fix. I think it looks really nice. Definitely it smooths and blurs the skin. Um, I feel like that's the vibe of today. That's like what everything is made to do and it's achieving it. I think it looks really nice. I feel really good about both of those powders. I would just love for them to expand the shade range on this guy. The next two products I actually don't have anything new for. Bronzer and blush are the only two products that I don't have a new product to try out. So I'm just going to hop off camera super quickly. I'm going to cheat and use two products from Dior which is just stupid because this is a drugstore video, but we're not gonna show it, so it's fine. I'm gonna use my Dior Backstage Contour and my Dior Color Awakening Rosy Glow Backstage Blush because they are my favorites. Don't tell anyone, it's still a drugstore video. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> Bronzer and blush is all on. We are looking more lively and awake. So the next product we have to go in with and test is a highlighter. This is a new highlight from Rimmel. This is their highlight um, buttery soft highlighting powder and mine is in 001 Stardust. My shoppers had two different shades. This was the lightest of the two obviously. Um, it's still pretty golden, but more of like a champagne gold, depending how you look at it. Hopefully not too dark for me. I'm going to go in really light handed just to see how we feel. I probably won't be able to use it on like the cupid's bow or the nose because you can really tell when some, when a highlight's like a little too dark for me in those areas. So I'm going to use my favorite highlight brush, my Morphe R36. Um, so I'm really tapping this off. I've never tried a highlighter from Rimmel. I don't think they've had any previously. I could be wrong. That actually looks gorgeous. I don't think that's too dark for me. I will try it on the nose a little bit because it doesn't look too dark on camera or in the mirror. It looks really, really gorgeous on the skin. It's like almost undetectable on the skin in person, like texture wise, you really can't, um, like obviously you can tell I'm wearing highlight, but it looks very smooth and buttery and like natural on the skin even though it's like a popping highlight. So that's usually what I look for in a highlight. Now we are ready to go in with brows and next to the NYX primer, this is probably the other product that I'm most excited for. I have been hearing incredible things about both of these products and they are so up my alley. So we have the new NYX, the brow glue. They killed this packaging, so cute and aesthetic. And then we also have the Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen and I got mine in 03 Taupe. Brow Gel is a non-sticky instant brow styler. It says it styles brow hairs and sets them into place. Non-sticky transparent formula with a precise spoolie for easy application. Love, hopefully it does what it says. I've heard it's amazing, so I'm sure it will. Then we have the Micro Brush Tip Brow Tint Pen for hair-like strokes. This instantly snatches brows, shake pen in a downward angle, fill in sparse areas with precise hair like strokes and add definition to other brow areas. So we'll see how I like this. It's definitely very sticky. Ooh, you can really feel it like instantly with just one little pass through. Normally I have to pass through my brows like maybe three times, but with one little swipe through, the brows stick and you got that laminated brow look, which is what I love. So that's one brow with the gel and one without. I really like this so far. I'm gonna let it dry down while I do the other one and then I'll pat on it to see what kind of texture the brows are. If there's any like clumping, then I will not be a fan. I don't mind if they're like hairspray held in place. I kind of like that. I just don't want them to be clumpy. I absolutely love this tiny ass spoolie too. It's like the perfect size. So even after finishing my right brow, this left one is still a little bit tacky. It definitely hasn't fully dried down, but it doesn't feel like it's going to clump up because the consistency is so thin. It's not as thick and waxy, so I don't really see it having the opportunity to clump up just because it's a thinner formula. Now we're ready to go in with the Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. I'm going to place it upside down and shake it a little bit so that all the product goes to the tip and this is a much smaller tip you probably can't even see it it's a much smaller tip than any other brow pen that I've played around with definitely a lot smaller than the ColourPop one 
Ooh, okay, I'm so excited for this. This is how it looks with the Lift and Snatch applied on one brow and no product, just the gel in the one brow. I love the consistency and the ease of use with this pen but I don't love the color. Um, for being taupe, I think that it's much too warm for me. Hopefully you guys can tell, but my real hairs are very light, blonde, cool toned. I don't have warm in my brows at all. So I might need to go back and get the blonde one and try it out with that. I thought taupe, taupe is usually a safe option for being like super cool toned. Usually blonde is gonna be more warm, but this almost looks like a caramel, like auburn color to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and film the other brow, but I think I definitely need to get a different color in this. So I'll probably go pick up blonde and hopefully that'll be a better match. I absolutely head over heels, love this product, both of them and the formulation. I just don't like the color, but I really, really love how my brows turned out. This is like exactly how I like for them to look. They look so perfectly like laminated and fluffed and pretty. That's what I like in my brows. So hopefully I can find a good color in this. I'm going to look up swatches and see what the blonde or some of the other shades look like. Like even a soft brown that's just not warm would be a better match than this, but I love the glue so far. Love the glue and I love this formulation, but I need a different color. So love these so far, just the wrong shade. I'm gonna go in with lips next and then do mascara last. That's just what I've been liking to do lately. We're not doing any eyeshadow today. I don't really have anything new and I just don't feel like it. I've been testing out a bunch of new eyeshadow and I wanted to go without today because I really wanted to focus on the mascara and the lashes, but we're gonna do lips first and I have two brand new products for this as well. We have the new Maybelline Ultimate Color Sensational in More Buff. I will have a full swatching video on five of these shades, testing them, doing lip swatches next week. Um, so stay tuned for that, but today we're just gonna use this shade. And then I also have the new from Physicians Formula Diamond Mineral Wear Lip Plumper. They came out with two shades of this. Obviously I got the super pink one. They also have a very light pink clear one, um, but this one is in the shade Pink Radiant Cut, and it is a super sparkly pink lip plumper. So super excited to pair these together. I've been loving this lip formula, super nice and creamy, more like matte and really wearable throughout the day. I'll have my full video on these next week, as I said, but we're just going to go in with this shade today, which is more buff, nice warm nude. I already know my thoughts on these. I really like that color, so I won't go on about that because I will have a full separate video on that, but let's try out this Physicians Physicians Formula Diamond Plumper. I'm going to pull up the product info on this, see if there's any like crazy claims. It is an ultra hydrating hybrid lip gloss. Plumper delivers nourishment while enhancing lips for a naturally full pout. Helps lips appear smoother and hydrated and it is vegan. So no crazy claims, just going to hydrate and plump up the lips. I also think this packaging is super cute. I feel like I didn't really show you guys. It looks like a little crystal, like a little clear quartz. Super pretty. This is a lighter gloss formula. It's not like a thick lip lacquer. It's more of like a lip oil consistency almost. It's a much thinner gloss, which is usually what I prefer. Here's how the gloss is looking. It definitely has a very slight tint to it. So if you like any type of, like if you want a clear gloss, get the other one. But if you want any type of color or pink, get the dark pink. It's really more sheer than it looks in the tube. Feels very nice and plumping. Not a painful plump. I hate super hurt hurting plumping glosses. This isn't one of those. This one is a little bit lighter and more natural, if you will. So really like that. And then the last product that we have to test is the product that I'm probably most, most excited about for this video. This has been blowing up on YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. This is the new Maybelline Sky High Mascara. I have the little cartridge here. This mascara gives limitless length, full volume. It has a flex brush, which we love because you can get really into the inner corner. First mascara made for full volume and authentic length. Custom flex brush grips and extends every lash. Formula made with bamboo extract and fibers. Gives authentic impact, no clumping, smudging, or flaking up to 24 hour wear. Everything I want in a mascara. They killed the packaging. This is so cute and aesthetic. I freaking love it. Just says sky high. And then that there is what the wand look like. Look like that's what the wand looks like. It has that flex brush that it advertises. Let's go ahead and build this up as 
thick as we can. I want my lashes to be like boom boom because we're not wearing any shadow today and I'm going to do this on the lower lashes as well because it says that it is smudge free for 24 hours so let's see about that. This is a pretty wet formulation which I actually prefer. So this is how it looks with one eye mascara applied top and bottom and then none on the other. That's crazy. I literally cannot think of a mascara that makes my lashes look this good. It's not crazy volume, but it's definitely crazy length. That is, wow. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other, do the other eye. Um, I did just want to do a quick recap on all of the products before we get into the wear test portion of this video. So let's get through this really quickly. Primer, love. I think it made the base look really smooth. I definitely want to keep playing around with it. We'll see if it helps the makeup last longer, but I really like it so far. It's definitely expensive, but good packaging worked really well. I'm into it. Absolutely love the CC camo. I think this is the top two, top three products that I tried today. I really, really, really like this. Looks gorgeous on the skin and I highly recommend. Love the Koki sponge. I think this worked so amazingly. It's so soft, very inexpensive. Great drugstore sponge option. The concealer was kind of a flop for me because it didn't give coverage, but it doesn't look bad on the under eyes. And I think it's just the wrong shade for me. So I don't have like full feelings on this, but I'm not super into it. The two powders, I really, really like. The translucent powder looks very nice and smooth on the under eyes. The foundation powder looks really nice on my skin. I definitely like both of these. I really like the highlighter a lot more than I thought I was going to. Really good price on this, so I definitely recommend this. Brow products, we know I love. The brow glue is probably my next favorite product that we tried today. I think it's really, really gorgeous. Great product from the drugstore. Love the brow pen, but I need a different shade. Both of the lip products I love. I don't know if I'm like obsessed with these or you need them but they're both really, really good. New releases, like them a lot. And then the mascara, holy crap, I'm obsessed with this. I didn't think my lashes could even look like this. I'm really in love with this. So out of everything I've tried, I would say my top three products today have been the e.l.f. Camo CC, the Brow Glue from NYX, and the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. So these three products are absolutely incredible. If you're going to pick up anything from this video, definitely these three. So, so good from the drugstore. I will talk to you guys in a few hours. We'll see how everything wears. Mostly I'm curious about how like the base makeup wears and then if the mascara transfers. So I will talk to you guys in a few hours to see where we're at. It is now 10.54 and I filmed my last clip at four. So it has almost been seven hours now that my makeup has been on. I have been wearing a mask for like six of those seven hours. So keep that in mind. I mainly just wanted to update on the like CC foundation base products and then my mascara. I think everything held up really, really well. So incredible. It never transferred on me. It didn't transfer on the lower lashes, which I'm really, really shocked about because it is a quite wet mascara formulation. So I fully expected transfer and we don't have any transfer. I think this is my new holy grail mascara I could do with a little more volume and I feel like you could get that with building it up and I think the base looks pretty good I mean it's not perfect because I have been wearing a mask I was wearing a regular mask and then also a face shield so I had something pressed against my forehead so my forehead doesn't look great but overall I think everything held up really, really well. If you liked this video today, if it was helpful for you, if you learned something, if you were entertained, please be sure to give it a like, a thumbs up, and um, comment down below if you haven't commented already. I really, really love chatting with you guys. As always, I hope you guys have or had an absolutely awesome day, and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye!